Ladies and gents, yes, sir, you guys know what time it is. It's another outstanding, entertaining show. All things covered. Patrick Peterson, Brian McFadden. Man, we have a treat for you sport lovers out there today. And this is a show, I'm going to keep it real. I'm showing my bias because you guys know, before I became a Pittsburgh Steeler, I was a Florida State Seminole. And we're not talking football with the nose on this particular episode. We're talking about softball. Ball. If you've been living under a rock in regards to softball, on the collegiate level, Florida State, they do what they do. In the ACC, on a national stage, they do what they do. Unfortunately, they came up a little bit short, but who cares? It's still an opportunity to celebrate the outstanding individuals that represent the nose this year on the softball field. So, Florida State fans, stand up. Softball fans, stand up. Sports fans, stand up. We have the great the great Catherine Sander Cox, senior pitcher, joining me here. Also, Michaela Edenfield, also sophomore catcher. You talk about the catcher-pitcher relationship. These two know each other extremely well. So I felt like it was a plus. It was a must to get them on the show together. So, girls, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. 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 <laughs> as, as you see, they spoke together. So that relationship is clearly <laughs> tied to the hip but outstanding year for you guys before we get into the conversation right i was told to give a personal shout out i'm a fan i'm a fan of you guys i'm a fan of florida state anything florida state related i tune in but one of my former teammates that i played with at florida state travis johnson he is one of the more faithful loyal fans ever he told me he said because i told him i said listen man I, i'm getting i'm getting your favorite softball players on the show he said make sure you give them a shout out for me and also to his daughter is one of the best up and coming softball players in the state of texas she will be a ninth grader this year she will be coming to florida state's softball camp as well so shouts out to boney and travis johnson i had to go ahead and do that for him so you guys got a lot of fans out there that love doing what seeing what you guys are doing but let's talk about the most recent activity with you guys uh in regards to the outstanding run I mean, it came up a bit short, but, you know, for both of you guys, and we can start with Catherine first. What was your favorite part of the run this past year with the team? Um, I mean, all of it. It, it was an incredible experience. It was, um, you know, just a couple of weeks of so much fun, a lot of just good memories with the team. I, mean, I think one of my favorite moments, though, is probably uh, when we – uh, beat Washington to get to the semifinals. That was absolutely insane. It was just such a pressure filled game. It was so much fight on both sides. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of softball that you prepare yourself to play just gritty and so much fun. And then to cap it off with that incredible catch from Josie and doubling her off on second base, just so exciting. Um, that was a really, really fun moment with the team. Yeah, I mean, personally, it's hard to just, like, pick one standout moment. Like, it's a journey. Uh, like, every year, every team is different. And I think um, we talk about a lot of the things that happened during the off season, and it's a part of the journey that has uh, took us to that point of our season and being able to be runner-up in the national title. Has, um, I mean, it's accomplished it accomplishment itself it's it's great feat and it took a team and team 40 uh, learned a lot from team 39 we talk about it all the time and I think personally um it's just nice to see the things and the standards that we set in place early in the fall and um holding each other accountable throughout the season and seeing those moments shine um at the end of the year uh like it's not just something that happens overnight you know but definitely I get the most um, enjoyment from my teammates successes. So I think being a part of Kat's perfect game, uh, I can't really say I've been a part of <laughs> a perfect game before that, but definitely that one's <laughs> going to be uh, <laughs> written down in memory lane for me to, to look forward to and can't yeah. wait for us to be in a circle together to talk about that to other people. So. So it was our perfect game, though. That was us, both of us. I, I was going to say that, Kat. I was going to say that because, you know, for you to throw a perfect game, you had to have some perfection coming from your catcher. Oh, yeah. You know, question. <laughs> she was definitely on point. Um, yeah. and, and Michaela, when you talk about, you know, the togetherness and being with 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 the girls, uh, what was it like to see the support from the community, especially when you guys got things rolling? 
Gosh, I mean, it's just been unreal. I mean, we're getting support from multiple sides. I think towards the end of the year, um, people get more excited for season softball where things, you know, mean a little bit more. But I think us just saying one game at a time, that mentality has been great. But just softball and fans in general for Florida State has grown tremendously. I mean, as you have probably heard, we've got the new seating set up and now we're getting sold out of that seating. It's, it's just one of those things. If you build it, um, they'll come. And I think now like the tall gaze is, okay, when can we get more seating? And I think mm. just that piece and the growth of the game has been really cool to watch and evolve from the point that when I was in middle school, high school, going to watch Florida State softball games to now wearing the jersey and seeing that we're on ESPN and just seeing all of the great um, – support from online to in person and I think it's just it's been a really cool experience so far and I can't wait to change things once I have to turn in my jersey definitely want to leave it better than I found it and um I think I shout out to my hometown I'm only 45 minutes west um from um Tallahassee and just being able to and where have is that, that where is that in Sneeds Florida yeah okay, just being able to that. have that hometown i like to say that um the coaches got me out of tallahassee's backyard but you know <laughs> <laughs> whatever works but it's been really tremendous and i think there's been a lot of things both on and off the field that people have supported us um of and it's it's been really cool Yo, yo cat one thing i want to talk to you about you know with you being the dominant pitcher i remember throughout this run uh it was a situation where i think the umpire called a ball and clearly it was a strike and you kind of whisper you kind of you remember what i'm talking about you kind of kind of said something with the glove in front of you mm. and i think when the umpire put it, gave me a ball because i was taking too long yeah oh that's what it was that's what it was so. and what did you say you remember what you what you kind of whispered underneath your breath do you remember what did you say Oh, yeah. Well, I was kind of uh, laughing at myself a little bit because I had made a mental mistake. There was a runner on second base in which I looked to Kocha for the pitch call rather than Michaela. But I looked at Michaela first, then Kocha. So I took a little too long. She had warned me before the inning that she'll call a ball on me. So she did. And then I just kind of laughed at myself. And then I just look at Michaela and I just said, just me and you, babe, because I mean, we do that all the time, constantly throughout a game. But it's we have such great nonverbal communication that's developed mm -hmm. over, you know, several years together in the bullpen, you know, grinding it out day to day. Um, so we really are a team. So at that moment, I knew what pitch was coming. I knew it was a drop away. And I was just like, she's going to swing and miss at this. Just me and you, babe. It's just, you know, let's get it done. So it doesn't matter that there was a ball on her, but it, that was a fun moment. Yeah. Yeah. Do you talk trash when you're on the mound? Like, is there any, has there any, been a moment and the same can be said for you, Michaela. Like, there has there been a moment where you kind of like, <laughs> you know, all right, act like you know, you know what I mean? Don't 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 try me. Like, are are you an individual that occasionally talk a little trash? Um, I don't know about talk trash. We kind of have our own thing. Like, you know, <laughs> if a batter is getting, I don't know, they they think that a strike is a ball or something or just catch a perfect pitch and Michaela will just be like, yep. And then throw it right back before the umpire makes the call or, you know, a batter makes contact, but we know right off the bat, it's a pop fly or something. She just goes, yep. And like, got her. So kind of, that's always fun. Um, I don't know about a whole lot of talking trash. If we do, I mean, no, I don't know about trash talk. Like we'll, we'll be funny or something during scout. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, I'm I'm very competitive, you know, I'm, I'm super competitive. So trash talk definitely comes in with that. And I think maybe as a younger player, I was a bit more trash talky. Um, mm -hmm. But then I think as I just grew into my career and into who I am as an athlete, it, it becomes way less about the opponent and more about you and your team and just what you're trying to get done out there. Um, so I think that I've grown into more of just focusing on myself, on my team, on Michaela, and, you know, what are we trying to do right here instead of like talking trash, but, um, yeah, we'll have some just funny little moments, I think. Michaela, what yeah. about you? Have you, you know, you had to let them, let, let them know what's up at any uh, point? <laughs> I think it's definitely different. I mean, softball is not much of a contact sport, um, you know, person to person, but yeah. I, I think. Definitely. I mean, there's a reason why I stopped playing basketball at the time uh, because I was fouling out in middle school. 
Um, that just, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just one of those things. Uh, basketball is completely different. I would elbow people, play dirty, trash yeah, talk. It is what it yeah, is, right? Yeah. But um, <laughs> softball is a little different. I think everything's more of like a mental edge and a mental approach. I think it's more of like a silent cat and mouse game a little bit. There's not much like verbalization of trash talk, but there's definitely like a, hey, like you can come at me. You want to try mm-hmm. me? Try me. Like, let's do it. You want to go there? Let's go there. But it's it's definitely not like verbalized as much. But um, for sure, like it's respecting the game, respecting uh, the opponent. And I think it's at like Kat said, like there's definitely some moments like I know for a fact straight out of the hand, whether it's going to be ball or strike. That's something a skill that I've developed over the years. And I know for a fact whether if it's a pop fly or if it's a home run. And again, a skill I've developed over the years. So it's also like one of those things, uh, again, just knowing and playing the game and just being competitive and playing one pitch at a time. I got a question for both of you guys. When coach is on the sideline and she's giving all these different hand signals, right? Bam, 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 bam. Is she talking to one person or is she talking to the entire team that's out there in the field, the infield and the outfield? Whole field. I just want to know that personally. So is it, say it again? Whole field. We all have, whole- uh, Yeah. It's, it's wow. basically she kind of just tells us what pitch she's calling. And then uh-huh. um, I always have if I'm out there pitching, I always have the ability to shake it off um, and go to another pitch. But the whole infield, like we I think that one thing that's cool about Florida State is that we play the game very smart. That's one of our core values. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, there are some teams that just really rely on their athleticism, which is awesome. But I think it's cool that we have really great athletes who also we know how to play shifts. We know how, we understand pitchers' tendencies. We understand batters' tendencies. Um, we understand situations, and we pitch to that. So, especially for me, not being a high strikeout number pitcher, I'm pitching to where I know my defense is at a lot of times. So she's signaling um, what's coming to the whole field, and they know exactly how to play for that pitch because they know what kind of. Uh, hits I produce as a pitcher um, and then they know how to play for me they we've looked at the batter spray charts whatever it is but I, we play really smart so that's all kind of you know going on in all of our heads which is cool and a lot of people don't see so it's fun gotcha. okay okay I just want to know because I, I watch and I'm like even in, in, in major league baseball I'm like man it's a lot of hand signals it's almost like a minute of minute worth of different hand signals. So who are they actually talking to? Uh, but that's definitely good information. Um, in regards to the World Series, right? I mean, the championship, Catherine, clearly Oklahoma is a beast. Uh, but can you describe to our listeners and our viewers the type of dynasty that you girls ran into in the finals? Yeah, Oklahoma, it's it's truly incredible what they've been able to do for the past, you know, decade, really. Um and, you know, the championships that they've won, the culture they've created, it's really, really cool. I have so much respect and admiration for it. Um, and they're they're tough just all the way through their entire team. It's a tough lineup to pitch to. They've got a great pitching staff. They're well coached. They're athletic. It's just like they're just a great team through and through, um, which is really just great for the sport of softball to see that um, and to see that that's, you know, where we're all, you know, it's not about... I think coach has said this a lot. It's not necessarily about like taking down the machine. It's about how can we elevate our game to get there and to compete and to win. And one thing that I've always believed in as as an athlete is to be the best, you got to beat the best. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't want to shy away from anything. And so to finish my last career game going up against the best, you know, they were the best that day this year. So to finish my last career game, getting to put my absolute best up against the best was so great it was so much fun and you know they got the best of us that day but it's all you can ask for as an athlete um is just for that opportunity because you can't control the outcome so just the ability to go out there and put it all out there leave it out all on the field it's it was really just such a fun challenge it was awesome yeah Michaela for you and Catherine you can speak on on this as well how big of an advantage is it for a school like Oklahoma? As you just mentioned, Kat, they're so good, well-rounded, but they have an opportunity to play when it's all the marbles are on the table, basically in front of their home crowd. Well, I can I can tell you this much. Um, 
Omaha is uh, in Omaha. And for some reason, I mean, OU, it just happens to be that way, right? Um, mm-hmm. The ASA Hall of Fame has been hosting the Women's College World Series back when Arizona and UCLA was still cutting it up. And it just happens to be that OU um, has brought their game up to this level and has been able to compete and win. And again, like what Kat said, like it's it's respectable, but and it is what it is. Like It's props out to them. They, they earned it. Uh, mm-hmm. They didn't just become number one overnight it took years and it took great program great coaches great players and again like what Kat said like I respect them and a lot of people um I know this has been like the whole thing about them and their celebration but you don't know what it's like to be a female athlete in that position and being scrutinized for something that male athletes could do on the daily and be okay with and I think, mm. you know what, they've had a lot of a lot of respect and a lot of support from people both on and off the field. And I'm just, again, excited to see like people starting to respect softball and for us to elevate our game. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Me personally, being an athlete my entire life, I can care less what gender you are. If you want to talk trash, you talk trash. You know what I mean? If you want to have fun and celebrate, have fun. But there are a lot of people, as you mentioned, Michaela, that allow a little more leeway for the guys than for the girls. How do you guys handle that? And that's why I asked that question early on. Is there any trash talk? Because I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? I didn't talk a lot of trash when I played the game, but if someone wanted to bring the fight to me, I welcome it and I'm a swing back. And if I'm swinging back verbally, then it is what it is. But how do you guys handle that disconnect in regards to the leeway that guys get compared to what girls don't get? Yeah. Okay. I, I, Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say it's um, it's really cool the opportunities that we're getting and the foundation that has been set by so many incredible strong women before us to for us to be able to have what we do. And, you know, I'm about to start my professional career and just to see how much support and investment there is in pro softball pro women's sports you know everybody wants to get in and invest in women's sports which is so incredible and just I you know I attribute it all to all the women that came before us um but I would say yeah it's a it's a constant challenge um people don't you know take female athletes as seriously we don't get the same exposure we don't get the same you know finance that's huge I think that if Michaela could agree if we were men and we were playing baseball the amount of money that we would be making right now with our skill sets and our everything, like I, it's, it's a crazy difference. Um, so there's always just more and more room to go. Like, like just think about if we, like we could be in the MLB right now and making millions and millions of dollars um, if we were men. So it's like a crazy thing to think about that gender does play such a role in that, but you know, it's, it's constant. It's what we deal with. And I think that, you know, it's just, it's up to us to continue to grow and continue to create those opportunities for the little girls that come out to the world series to watch us for the ones that look and see us on TV, just to be in the position that we're in. It's um, you know, it comes with responsibility of being a role model and making your own contribution to the game. And so just continuing to grow the game and create those opportunities for young girls is so huge because um you know, I wouldn't have what I um, have and Michaela wouldn't and we wouldn't have the opportunities to continue to play and to, you know, make some money off of our sports and just everything if it weren't for the women that came before us. So I think that it's cool that the torch is constantly passed um, to create more for the next generation of ballers. Yeah, for sure. Like I or we don't get to choose how people play the game. And it's one of those things like we control what we control and what we think doesn't apply to everyone. And I think like you can say what you want about them celebrating. I mean, they've earned their right to do whatever they please. I mean, we all put on their pants. We all put on our pants the same way. We're all just competitive. But we want to play. We want to play the against the best. And that's what has driven us here so far. And I just, I have a lot of respect for it. I I know that they've had um, some back and forth on it, but at the same time, I think there was something, um, I forgot exactly where it was on ESPN. Someone was like, if you have such a problem with it, beat them. And it's like, what are the things I was like, all right, like fair, 
Like it's yeah. one of those things. That I think the center of it is just them celebrating the small things. And that has a lot to say with softball in general. Like it has a lot to say about good elite softball is being able to take the small things and knowing that a walk, uh, being hit by a pitch, the little things of the game add up and they matter. And oh, you just happens to take advantage of it. And they definitely um, do a good job of making the little things like matter and make it a big. So I'll say this much for me, not even having a dog in the race, just want to watch it quality athletes do what they've been called to do i love being entertained and as you mentioned people might complain about ou celebrating well the best way to not have them celebrate is to beat them and right now they do it a lot people used to talk about floyd mayweather all the time celebrating and <laughs> showboating i mean heck he's winning and he's entertaining and let's go back to a few months ago right one of the more most i think it was the most watched women's uh championship game with Iowa and LSU, right? And the reason why it was one of the more, uh, I, I think, quote, uh, don't quote me on this, but I could be a little bit off, but clearly a lot of people watched the game, more people than the norm. But the reason why is because you had two legit teams that were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with dynamic players that talk trash, that talk trash. And 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 we, we're not used to seeing that, especially from women and they were going, and a lot of people were complaining about either side, you know, from uh, Caitlin or uh, Reese with LSU. I can care less. I don't care. As long as you're not being disrespectful, right? And we have the, the actual numbers, 9.9 .9 million viewers, most viewed women's college game ever. <laughs> ever. So I love being entertained. I can care less. I, as long as the respect and the integrity is still involved, Man, you got a lot of people who are simple-minded people who just be like, oh, they shouldn't do that. Why are these women? No, let them have fun. Show your emotion. Because a lot of people don't know what it takes to get to that moment. To be in a championship game, it's a lot of work. A right. lot of work. And most people don't see the work that you guys put in. We only I, see I also, game day. Yeah, I also think people love to hate. And they're going to hate when you're good. Yes. So they're going to hate yeah. on everything that they can. So, um, yeah. Oh, you caught a lot of hate for their celebrations and all that stuff. But I mean, I'm always a big advocate for cheer for your team to, uh, rather than like cheer against the other pitcher, stuff like that. But I'm also a pitcher. Um, so of course I'll say that, but I, I think like, I, I like how OU goes out there and celebrates everything. I think it keeps the team energy up. It keeps everybody engaged. And, you know, it's, it's cool to do that to a stadium with all of your fans there. Like that's, you know, a, th tens of thousands of people and they're that's what they're there to see so i, I yeah. think it's cool entertain it's passion, entertain. It's it's passion. Yeah, you it know is, and i think my biggest issue is is um as amazing as it is um that the lsu iowa game got so many views women's sports has been doing this for a very long time people have mm -hmm. been passionate in this sport for a very long time people have been trash talking in this sport for a very long time across the board across all women's sports it's just happened that we're finally getting the acknowledgement we're finally getting the exposure and just being able to talk to people that have laid the jersey out um, before i was here alumni and um, seeing the growth of women's sports in general, like you build it, people will come. You get right. this exposure, people will watch it. There will be more, more fans of women's sports every day if you give us a chance. Hey, well said, well said. Michaela, this question for you because you're still at the university, right? In this era of NIL, what kind of opportunities pop up after a whirlwind season like you guys just had? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> See, um, it, a lot of things are changing. Uh, we're talking about the exposure piece. Uh, we gained quite a few, a couple thousand followers overnight. Uh, it's just not something you see much. Um, and it's definitely been different. Definitely had a lot of conversations going along. And what can I do to not make just my experience in NIL better, but my whole team and the rest of the women's sports at Florida State, what can I do to help be an ambassador for Florida State University? And I think um, just, again, getting that across the table, um, it's all of us. Like, it's it, we need more for women's sports. And um, a lot of people don't like the idea of NIL and how it's been used and fixed for men's sports and how it's like a leveraging tool for recruiting. Um, but I think 
you can say that, but it's also done a lot of good for things um, for for women's sports. I mean, we're not, um, we don't get full scholarships like that. Like we are a percentage sport. um, So it's definitely one of those things that- Y'all don't get full scholarships? I didn't know that. No, we don't. Wow. It's it's very rare. It's very rare if you were to, but we don't we don't get full scholarships like that. At least um, some people get money from academic side. People mm-hmm. like combine from what their parents can help out with to academic to athletic. It's um, it's very rare to get a full scholarship in softball. Wow, I didn't know that. Thank you for yeah. that insightful information. I just yeah, I didn't know and. And you'd be surprised for a lot of people, they don't know that. So Mm. um, NIL kind of fills that gap of what girls can use to, number one, pay the bills and um, Mm. be able to do some other things with school. I know um, Kaylee Mudge off of my team, um, she's using a lot of her money. She's saving it, um, putting it off for her school post softball, post Mm -hmm. her career. So it's pretty cool to see that in um, it's I, I I support it 100 percent and again I'm just trying to leave this jersey better than I found it and hopefully being able to get some insight and in how I can help women's sports grow from this point on. So individually speaking, uh, Michaela, quote unquote, Area 51. That's her nickname, by the way, ladies and gents. Area. How did you get, how did you get that nickname, by the way? Like, what's the background <laughs> on that nickname? Um. I never wore the number 51 until I got into college, and uh, my mom wore the number 51. I come from a household of women athlete um and my mom played slow pitch and she wore the number 51 so i decided to okay. wear 51 in honor for my mom made her cry it was real sweet i loved it and uh for some reason t cam was like area 51 and then what came like a little inside joke um kind of got revealed one time when i started to play and I think our SID put it down as like area 51 hits a home run or whatever. And it got, it got it out. So it was, it was pretty cool to see that. And yeah. Something that I would have never thought would have happened from wearing the number 51. Um, but it's been pretty cool. It's, it's, it's a dope nickname, by the way. And you also had, you said your mom played, she wore 51. You also had another family member that played for Florida state, uh, Teresa, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, Teresa so you basically and- like a, a leg- legacy player right now for the nose. When you talk about having a family member play for the university and you're following following her steps. For sure. I mean, some might say following um, her steps. I, I, we talk about all the time. That's uh, one of my closest family members. Uh-huh. Um, I have, again, learn a lot from her because she's been in sim- similar situations, but um, we're two different people. And I'm just happy that you get to see Ed and Field on another jersey while it's dope. you're here. So, yeah. That's dope. So, Kat, for you, being a senior, no longer a part of the team, tell us all what's next for you. I, I heard you just had a, a workout literally before we started our recording. So fill us in on what's next for you and your outstanding career moving forward. Yeah, uh, more softball, basically. Um, I'm excited to get out there and play professionally this summer. There are a couple opportunities that Mm -hmm. uh, I'm lucky enough to get to choose which one is the best for me. There are a couple different pro leagues now. Um, And then I I did just come from USA Softball um, tryouts, camp, whatever the official name is. But uh, I just came from that in Vero Beach and just an incredible experience. Um, how was how was the, the training for you today? It was great. It was it went well. It went super well. It was so much fun. It's um, really cool. It was, about, I think, 35 ish athletes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 35 of the best from around the country uh, getting to show up and train a little bit together, get to learn from each other, get to learn from the staff of coaches that were there. Um, and then we, uh, got to compete against each other, which was really cool and really fun. Um, it's such a cool challenge. So it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot and definitely made me more excited to get back out there and start playing again. Okay. And then after that, hopefully some international ball for me. Mm, okay. So how does it work in regards to softball players that are, you know, talented enough to to take that step to the professional level? I, I know you mentioned there's some pro some pro t- opportunities, and that's domestically, right? That's here in our country. Is that is that mm-hmm. accurate? Yes. And then you said internationally. So what is the best avenue for you in regards to, you know, playing 
to to the level of competition that you would like to play with? And also when you talk about compensation, is it better to go international league or stay here in our country domestically? Yeah. Um, so I was lucky enough to get drafted to two leagues, um, which is such a dream come true. I was drafted to both the WPF and Athletes Unlimited. Um, mm-hmm. So still working out who I'm going to play with this summer. And then um, I am looking to play internationally in Japan. And they have an incredible softball league set up over there. Um, it's, you know, it's very well established. They have great athletes. I would say that the money is definitely uh, overseas right now. Uh, mm-hmm. They're just, you know, a longer established league, but um, they love to um, have Americans come and uh, help them win. But it's it's really cool. A lot of my role models um, have played in Japan and I've ha- had that dream to go and play over there since I was in high school. So it's really mm. cool that that's all um, kind of falling into place for me right now. But I would say the avenue to get there as um, I'm, I'm, you know, lucky enough to have coach at in my corner um, and she has a lot of connections. So she's um, hooked me up with some agents and all of that. But um, I think that if you you want to play there's opportunity and there's way to find it out you just got to find the right people to put you mm-hmm. in contact with the right people and then um you know just watch it go from there so would you have to be in japan year round or is it just seasonal during the season seasonal so um the season is i believe I, I believe i would have to spend six months in japan but um it's split in half so i would spend three months in japan and then three months in the states three more months in japan oh, so okay. it, it works out nicely because then i also have uh the opportunity to play in both the japanese league and the and an american league oh so you get a chance to double dip you get you get mm-hmm. paychecks coming from two different angles mm-hmm. exactly like smart <laughs> smart 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 michaela with you returning to the Seminoles. Uh, I'm in Tallahassee with the Seminoles. Shout out to uh, Luke. Uh, <laughs> with you returning, right, wh- wh- where's the program headed? You know what I mean? <laughs> with the success you guys just had, you know, dominating, you know, in conference play, of course, you know, you competed for a championship. You know, where do you see this program going? Yeah, I mean, fortunate. Um, we have a lot of returners coming back and uh, a lot of seasoned vets, as we like mm-hmm. to say. Um, gonna miss Kat she was great for us but she's always in our hip pocket whenever we need her I know uh, she's just a phone call away so and I can say that about a lot of the alumni and um, the reason why I have been successful is because I've been working with Anna Shelna I I credit Anna to this day um, Mm -hmm. working with her for one year um, and then on to that and working with Kyle Lepresky uh, she again graduated off with Kat so again people are always like in the hip pocket right and leaving the jersey better than they found it Um, yeah but super excited for team 41 I think like I said we've got a lot of returners a lot of um, a lot of our main hitting lineup is going to be coming back so you'll see um, uh, definitely a a little bit of a different dynamic here and there of uh, spots to fill I guess you could say Um, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say people are going to quote unquote re like completely replace someone else's shoes in their position. Nobody's ever going to be Cass Andercock. Okay. That's just underlined. There's just underlined. No one's going to be her, but yep. there's definitely going to be someone that's going to be in a FSU softball player uniform. And it's going to, it's going to be great. I'm super excited. Um, well, let me ask you this question. I'm asking both of y'all since you talk about Cat, and we know how dominant she's been throughout his, her career, especially a year ago. Who can kind of follow Cat's shoes? Not necessarily saying wear the same shoes, but kind of be in the same shopping area where her shoes were located. Like who who's going to be that that person that steps onto the mound and be like, huh? Is this basically a dub for us? Because that's how I, when any, any I'm gonna keep it real, Cat. Anytime I know you a pitch, I'm like, it's a wrap. <laughs> it, it's this it's pretty much just done that's how i felt i was like because she, she, she is her so who 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 is going to be her next year for the nose yeah i'm who so excited to find out i'm so excited to find out um we have had such a great pitching staff this year uh we have a good amount of returners i think everybody has the ability to step up mm-hmm. mckenna had such a great freshman year i'm so proud of her and what she was able to do in her freshman year and i think that, you know she's definitely got the talent i'm so excited to see where she ends up as a senior 
Um, but you know, something really cool about Florida State is that I feel like everything comes so full circle. So I think learning so much from Megan King in her fifth year um just set me up for success for the rest of my career. So I'm so grateful for her and just um um, you know, how she left the program better than she found it. And, um, you know, and everything that I learned from her being able to pass down to McKenna and Maddie Balk, our other fresh pitcher freshman this year, um, mm-hmm. was so fun, uh, to be in that leadership role and it's challenging for sure, but it was, it was really fun. And then I think another thing about Florida state is that we get some really great transfers. We had Kylie Hansen, Kaylin Arnold, Danielle Watson. We had some really great transfer pitchers over the year and with how the transfer portal has um, really, yeah, it's changed the sport. So, um, you know, I'm sure that Coach O will get some really great transfers on the squad next year. Um, You know, I would... I I would think to see a pitcher probably in that, but I think that the staff that is returning is nothing but amazing and um, can't wait to see who steps up next year and how all the innings are filled. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. Um, I want to like touch into that too. Like we have an incoming freshman class. That's going to be a great addition as well. Definitely young, definitely. um, They're going to, (laughs) they're, A lot of information coming their way soon, but I'm sure they can take it on. I think uh, I think we have one of the top five, um, I think maybe number two or something recruiting class uh, that's incoming. So, I mean, Coach has done a great job with this program and this culture here. And people, um, regardless of whether if it's um, athletes getting recruited in high school or if it's transfers, people want to come and play for Florida State because of um, such a great culture we have here. Okay. I love it. Before I, before I let you ladies leave, I want to hit a few superlative questions for you. And this is where I hit you with rapid fire questions. I want your honest, unbiased answer. First for both, right? We can go with, we can go with the, the senior first, right? For all of these. Biggest reason you picked FSU? Um, the coaching staff. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, growth, like family, the culture. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Favorite FSU tradition? Um, I think whenever the band comes out and plays the chop, it's just <laughs> a fun. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say the fight song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fin- fin- singing the fight song. Gonna, uh, fight, fight, fight. Dun, 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 dun. And that one right there, yeah, right? We got the whole thing down. Yeah, I, I don't know the words all the way. Forgive me. I'm sorry. We I, do. We've done it plenty of times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can I can sing along, but I don't know every word. So, but I know we're going to fight, fight, fight. And you spell out Florida State, Florida State. Uh, and I'm not going to embarrass myself. All right. Favorite <laughs> food spot on campus? Ooh. That's a tough one. On campus? Or just let's say Tallahassee. Then, if you want to say Tallahassee, I know what my favorite food spot was and probably still is in Tallahassee. That's tough. That yeah, that's that's so hard. I'm a burrito border fan. They support our team a lot. Love going there. Um, you go, Michaela. Let me see if I can think of one. That's true. Okay, if we're talking smoothies, Smoothie King. If we're talking fresh eats. I got to go Moe's. I'm a Moe's over Chipotle girl. Welcome to Moe's. Welcome to uh, Moe's. Yeah. That queso is just too good. Uh, if we're talking like upscale restaurant, maybe BJ's. Yeah. I'm a, I'm so I'm a mad so. Yeah, Mad So. Mad So BJ's. Yeah, if we're making this about FSU, definitely Mad So then. Well, mine, and it's still there, is Guthrie's. Oh, oh man! I'm yeah, y'all tripping. You, girl. What are y'all doing? No, a good I... gut box. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. The gut a sauce. Double fries, no slaw. Double fries, Thanks. no slaw. Yep, that's the way. Yes. What are we tell? How do you can't forget about Guthrie's right there on Tennessee Street? Been there forever. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. been. Now, yeah, now so. there's more competition in town. Uh, there's a oh, yeah. chicken being built. Every, they Zagsby's. Just got, they just added a right. race and canes. I, oh, Whataburger is also one of my favorite spots. Yeah, well. Whataburger. Whataburger. And they stay open oh, late 30. You know, you can go yes. to Whataburger after the club. They're still open. There's a line. No, it's mm-hmm. the breakfast that opens up at 11 o'clock for me. That's gas. Yeah, yeah, it is. That is. That is. Okay, now, now we're talking. Last question for you. 
Best person to have the ox cord on road trips. Who are you Christina giving the Hartley. ox cord to? Christina. Okay, she's yeah. a DJ. Christina, yeah. She's a DJ. Yep. All right, shots out to Christina. You've been known to be the best DJ on the team, so the expectations are <laughs> kind of high right now moving forward, right? All right. Well, yep, she got oh, you know what? Bus, she got parties. She's got, she got the everything. from us. Michaela, yeah. before before I let you go, what's next for you? Because I want to enlighten the folks in, in what you do, not just dominating, you know, when you're on the on, on the field, but also the makeup, right? You know, tell us a little bit <laughs> about that whole ordeal with the makeup and what's next, and and how can we get some nil opportunities for you with the makeup? I think that's dope, by the way. You yeah, can be like a you. little uh 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 uh. Which one of the um Kardashians got in the makeup line? Which what? <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> Yeah, dang, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Yeah, no, that's funny. That is so funny to me. I'm yeah, sorry. so but tell her what's what's up because you got a cool little thing. You know when you're rocking and rolling, catching the pit the the, the, the strikes from from cat, but you, then you see, I'm like, okay, that's dope. So how did that come about, and what's next? Yeah, I, I mean, I've always been into makeup. Um, at a young age, I got into uh, RuPaul Drag Race. Wanted that confidence. So what used to be more of an insecurity thing, um, over time just became something I enjoyed to do. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have to wear I don't have to wear makeup to show up on game day to be locked in. It's not a superstition or anything like that. It's definitely just something I like to do um, off the field that I've been able um, to be able to show myself and who I am. Um, that has been pretty cool. So now I um, do all of these complex makeup looks and I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of fun to add something that's like off the field, on the field mm -hmm. and just being able to like vibe and have fun with it. It's been really, really cool. So I'm definitely hoping maybe with, um, again, the exposure piece, like the, the yeah. exposure that we had at the world series and definitely been able to do a couple of cool looks here and there. Um, has hopefully that will pay off a little bit. So we it will shall see. Yeah, keep, uh, we keep shall it going. see. Keep, I'm, uh, keep it I'm going. trying to open up some doors, get some conversations through again, not just for me, but just for women's sports in general at Florida State. So opportunities, if they present themselves, uh, I'll definitely make use of them. But as far as I know right now, um, nothing's too crazy in the works of a makeup line or anything. But if I was to like say a dream goal or whatever, I would love to collab with a brand um, that would could be out at drugstores and uh same like have something saying it's like game ready makeup line or whatever yeah, whatever yeah. that piece and kind of add the area 51 or whatever but it'll be a lot of fun i'm do, super excited when you, you get girls are playing a game do you have like makeup on like what, what's the gordon what's the unwritten rule like do you you know i know you still want to look the part right but do <laughs> How, how does I don't know you know what I mean I, I just wear I used to wear eye black that's it you know oh you know, now but, there's so there's so, so many so, more so, things going like people are expressing themselves like from what it used to be just wearing your team color bows to something like similar to what UF has with their sunflower how it's like um designated for like something culture wise of what they like to do to now people are just having fun and I think that's the biggest part is like being able to express yourself as a female athlete on a high stage I mean you can't ask for much more than that just being able to be yourself but um there's people doing some eye black glitter putting glitter in their hair parts the, okay. the hair braids and designs are are sick i love just to show up at our locker room early to be like hmm so that's how she's gonna get her hair done today and this is how she's gonna get her hair done today and kind of see like the background works of that too so i mean Again, like I don't think any of that is like a superstition for us mm -hmm. at Florida State, but it's definitely something that uh, we like to do. And you know, the whole thing uh, feel good, look good, play good. So, no question, no question. Well, if there's any reps for Rihanna and, and her brand Fenty that will be listening to this episode or watching <laughs> us, hit our girl Michaela up. You know, she's doing some nice, creative things with her makeup while she's balling <laughs> and knocking softballs out of the park. It could be Area 51 line. It could be something dope like that. So Just 50. How that that is, I can give you the most reliable product review. Let's really test your foundation. Is it game proof? We'll no. see. Sweat so. proof and all that, right? Because you sweat. Yeah, me. I love that. And I'm the sweating. helmet, too, if it's coming on. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, heck. We already <laughs> said Fenty. You know what I mean? Let's go. <laughs> Riri. Stop playing. <laughs> Oh, last question before I let you go. What rival do you hate the most? Miami or Florida? Florida. Both. Florida. 
we don't have to worry about Miami because they don't have a softball team. Yeah. But, okay. Right. So, yeah. I but now, if it. I'm watching it from a football perspective, Miami. <laughs> what about you, Cat? Football perspective. Probably still Florida for me because I just love to beat Florida. It's a good yeah, feeling. <laughs> I, I hate. I hate both of them. <laughs> I love it. I look two knows, two knows, but thank you, ladies, for joining me here. All things covered. Outstanding episode, man. Catherine Sendacock, man. Make sure you guys follow her as she continues her professional career. And we will be seeing her represent our country as well, throwing dimes for Team USA. And of course, she said, you heard her, she's gonna be playing overseas, getting that check. She's gonna be coming over here getting that check. So hey, if there's any opportunities for our girl, make sure you hit her up. And the same can be said for Michaela. She will be returning to the team what well, you can be a junior next year right yes uh redshirt junior I redshirt. Have two more seasons left you got yeah. two more seniors down there in tallahassee you know what i mean with with guthrie's and, and her makeup line and by that time hopefully somebody go ahead and introduce her to, to an opportunity that she can take and go ahead and keep doing what she's been doing so thank you once again for joining me here all things covered patrick peterson brian fadden best of luck to you to you ladies i know success is waiting for you just go out and claim it and most importantly you already know what time it is go Nose. Oh, <laughs> thank you.